Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. In the last video, we did quite a bit of work on the downpipe. It's still not 100% done. Uh, we need to do some incorporation of things like, we need to get the wastegate doing its thing. What else? Oh, I need to add an O2 bung. I was gonna do that right before the end of the last video, but uh, I got bullied by the kids in the neighborhood to fire it up. They really wanted to hear it run, and so we fired it up. You got, when the kids come over and say, start it up, Okay, it's kind of like when a kid hands you a, a toy telephone you answer that you answer it That's just how it goes uh, this video We are going to continue on our quest to getting this damn thing on the road uh, in the car We 3d printed I don't know if I put this in the video or not. I think I just did this on my own. I 3d printed a new gauge bezel If it'll focus because it's tripping out over the gate. Yeah, so 3D printed this new gauge bezel that fits in the HVAC slot, like, perfectly. We did these. These are just blank buttons that I modified to print off of Thingiverse. And I put these on Thingiverse, so if you want them, just go look up P-G-H-P-U-N-K-I-D on Thingiverse, you'll find them. Yeah, so, uh, right now the gauges, they just kind of, they come up to the, the gauge itself and they just kind of stop short. All these need to be plugged into the gauges, and then we need to get the, uh, the other half for, so the... The, uh, everything except for the AFR gauge uh, terminates to, you know, it comes out of this. So your data lines are uh, the, the, I think it's the white and the brown, and then the black and the red are your power and ground. There's a little tiny power thing back there, if you look. That red thing is switch power. So I figured that that was the easiest way to, like, when I get my, uh, my ghost box, um, it'll get power from that. My gauges get power from that. Anything else I need that's an accessory will get power from that. We're, we're gonna get the Y band hooked up. We're gonna get the gauges hooked up, which most of these are just informational. They don't need to really even go to the computer. If you're, I mean, the AFR does, but that's about it. Um, the other two are just our reference. We could add them to the ECU later. It's not a big deal. Like I said, the big one is is monitoring the AFR because the computer needs that to f adjust fuel trim. Uh, we might try to do the arrow catch in this one. If this one runs on too long, we will probably do that in the next one. Uh, I need to get the hood latching so we could trot this around the neighborhood without worrying about it coming up and smashing our brand new windshield. So, and then we probably need to get this thing off the jack. So this is like one of my least favorite things to do in this car, especially in this garage, because um, since we're on kind of the the budget spec of everything, I have to crawl under the car to remove most of the downpipe. Uh, the V band's kind of a pain to get to because it's right next to the V, uh, the trans tunnel or the trans bracket, and uh, I have to get underneath the header in order to get to it because it's tucked as far forward as I could possibly get it. Um, you know, just a easy hole shot kind of thing. Um, but that means in order for me to get in there, I have to kind of go under the manifold, which is that volcanic stuff you caught on everything. And then you gotta sit here and rub your arm against it for an hour. So I'm gonna put my jacket there and hopefully that'll save me a little bit. I know I'm probably terrible at stainless welding. I'm probably terrible at TIG, but I figure the best way to learn is practice and the best way to practice is having projects to practice on. So these are my projects I'm practicing on. If it breaks or doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. This isn't a structural piece. It's not a whatever. We're just gonna lose power or it's just gonna start blowing exhaust everywhere. So what we're doing here is this, we got to put the bung in the downpipe in a place that makes sense. Now, there's not a lot of room everywhere, and I don't want to point it facing down like that, but a lot of people do it from the side, normally around where the cat would go. Um, we don't have a lot of room around the V-band, but we do have a little bit of room at the bottom. So I'm going to put this this bung down here. I should have put it done it before. But I'm going to put it in the elbow, kind of like that. So we'll grab our sensor. This will be on the the left side of the car, facing the left side of the car, kind of towards where the turbo is at. And it'll stick out like that, like that. So I think it'll serve, it'll do everything we need it to because there's miles of clearance around this area. Especially here because this is in front of the subframe, I believe. Like right here is like where the subframe is. Crawl back under the damn car. All right, so there's a ton of room under the car around this area. 
it was like they knew something was gonna happen at some point. So my plan is to have it like right here, which you can see there's miles of room. So right here in the base of the elbow on the flex side going laterally towards the driver's side in America. Let's do it. Maybe a little towards the up. All right, so we took a break. We got our plug out and, uh, you know, wanted to test fit and things just to make sure things still work right. Because sometimes things get warped. When I did the aluminum part for the, uh, the temp sensor, eighth inch MPT bung on the charge pipe. Uh, I warped it. I actually had to go get a tap and a, uh, a bolt for it, a steel bolt, just to kind of uh, feed it. So, uh, obviously that one fit. So now we got our actual uh, O2 sensor for the wideband. This is the wideband. And so now it's in and it's a little bit, just a smidge upward from uh, horizontal. So this should work just fine. And then we can take it, plug it into the uh, the sensor, finish the wiring up for that because it kind of goes up like this, you know, so up the firewall sort of deal. And then from there, uh, we can give power to everything and then we should be able to get a reading while the engine's running. So uh, let's get to seeing how bad our AFRs are. Okay, let's put it in. <clears throat> All right, so now I just gotta go Add some power to those uh, those wires and get them to the uh, gauges. So I got to get the the AFR gauge and all that. I got to get the pigtail for that out and uh, get it some power. And then we got to just connect this line here to that sensor we just plumbed down there. Pull back the exhaust. So that's uh, I'm gonna do that. And I'll get back with you in a second. All right. So today's Wednesday. I think it's been since the weekend since I've updated the video, but I have been working, so let's play catch up. Uh, number one, uh, I had some issues with our wastegate here, not wanting to open uh, under whatever. I thought maybe some of the, the piping had a, a factor in the vacuum. Turns out it didn't. Uh, turns out what the major factor was is the spring. Uh, I even replaced the hose just to make sure because it kind of had like a quarter inch. It went from, I think it was like a 5 16 to a quarter inch reduction, something like that. And I tore it apart and obliterated it last night just to find 16 inch spring. Probably wasn't going to be good enough because we're pulling 16 inches of vacuum at most at complete idle. So we put in the 8 inch spring. Life's good. Wait, the blow off valve actuates. We're happy. So it opens when we're at idle. That's what we want. The bigger part. And this is this is going to be a, a big thing. Let me scoot past this freaking thing here. We'll cover that in just a second. Uh, the bigger thing here is uh, we got our gauges and the inputs into the ECU, which you can kind of see down here is a little bit of a mess. We've got that wired, which means we got logging in closed loop of oil pressure. Our boost and I know there's already a map sensor but it doesn't hurt to have another look and then we also have uh, closed loop O2 wideband so we have a wideband 
we have our uh, oil pressure, we have all that. But here's the bigger deal, and I think I've said this earlier in this video, I can't remember because it's been a blur. Um, we got tires. So I'm gonna try and sneak out of work tomorrow and just go get these uh, these tires fitted up and uh, you know mounted and whatnot so I can you know get them on the car. So what does that leave us? So that leaves us with one last thing that we really need to do to be able to drive the damn thing, and that is uh, well first off we really need the wastegate uh, working in some capacity whether we just wire or tube straight to the gate, make sure we got the right spring in it. And or uh, you know I have a manual GFB bleed bleed valve style boost controller, uh, or we can actually hook up the Honda data, which I think is going to be a little bit more because um, I really don't want to have to delete the. Um, so where are we? Where do we need to do? Well, we need to tap the turbo housing, which means I got to pull the coolant. Uh, charge pipe of a part again um, and we need to do the hood latches so uh, we'll do the 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 what you call it the tapping and and you know I gotta pull the thing apart so I can get to the thingy and do the spring but that's gonna be a different thing I'm not even gonna film that because I just at this point we're at about uh, what is it eight days that I want to have this thing rolling and driving we still gotta finish look my battery wiring I had to buy a new battery Again, that's another thing. So, the excess power battery was not happy. So, uh, this fuse was mounted here. Um, this was all screw terminal stuff. So, I had to cut out. This is all the old harness that was in the car when I got it. Or, it was part of the, the charge harness that I got for the car. So, I got the ground. It goes to the, the valve cover right here. And then this is where everything goes. So the valve cover normally has a ground that goes to something. This, I think, goes down to, it comes down here to the frame right here. So these all meet, and then they're supposed to go to the terminal post. But, um, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, one of these was not going to fit. So i got to make a new line for this that comes up to here that will then have a universal post mount work. So i got this cable. That'll fit. It's down here somewhere. I think, or it's or it's right there. Um, and then this, the power side of this is going to be even more of a pain in the ass because this is my starter power, and then this is my cabin power. And all of this has to somehow mount somewhere. Um, so what I think we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut this, extend it, put this inside, run this one inside, and then mount this on the inside of the car in a place where it's not going to want to stab the battery and then mount it. I'm going to work on that off camera along with I have to pull all the intercooler off and tap the turbo housing. So, you know, I have to remove it so I don't get metal shards in the engine. Um, so I got to pull all that apart, but we're not going to do that right now. Right now, we're going to cover the arrow catch. So we need to have hood latches. And uh, if you've been following along, you'll know that this whole front end is kind of uh, it's kind of fake news because it doesn't really do a whole lot other than hold the intercooler and radiator. We don't have a hood latch. There's no hood latch. It doesn't. It, it's fake, like I said, fake news. It, it doesn't exist. There's nothing there. So because of that, we have to have a different latching mechanism. And quite honestly, if we're going to be doing whatever speed this car is going to do, could be doing buck fifty. I don't know. Uh, you're gonna want it to hold the damn thing shut and some regulation says you have to have it anyways So we got the best the best of the best with honors Arrow catch and we got a key so I had previously bought in some quick latch But I'm gonna use those for a bumper because I don't have any bumper tabs or anything to hold it um, And they weren't locking anyway, so I would rather have this with keys so uh, I did just watch the video. If you want to know more about how to do this without screwing it up, go look up Arrow Catch on uh, Surge Motive Garage, their YouTube video. I've been watching him for a while, and uh, he does a lot of RSX stuff. Really cool. Super underrated. Go watch him. I'll put a link to the video in the description below if you want to know how to do some Arrow Catch stuff without being uh, a noob about it. Uh, I, I'm extremely noob, so... We're gonna we're gonna try and see what we can do here. I have an idea of what I want to do, and that is uh, since we're gonna have um, let me turn you around. 
since we're going to have, I mean, over here is not going to work. So here it is. This is it. Um, this is super strong. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to hook it to probably here and here. <clears throat> and then if you look up here, we got this hump. And I think this will be enough space for us to do everything we need to. Um, you know, because you have to cut a hole for it to go through. But then you also need something on the other side to be able to grab it. Now, the only thing that sucks about an EG is the round. So your hood's round. Everything's round. Uh, so I got to find a place where it'll line up and fit. And then I can also bolt it without too many issues with it being round. This is kind of what I'm thinking is so like here and here are where my hood latches are going to be and we're just going to have to do what we can about the contour um there's no nothing about this hood that has any kind of flat spot so we're just gonna have to send it literally copying what search motive did so if you want to see it go follow them go check them out i'm not going to explain it because at this point i just want to get the damn car done we got eight days now you got time so let's do this All right, so since I don't have the same template he did, I just put the the, the beauty ring that goes on the bottom, the, the bottom clamp, and uh, I marked two marks, and then that's kind of where the pin's gonna be. So you just kind of gotta center it, and then put this over it, draw on your hood, the inside, and and maybe even try to dot the, the holes with like a Sharpie, and just make sure it's gonna work. I have to modify mine to sit at like such a drastic angle, because it's, if you try doing it this way, it's gonna be like this and it will never latch. It just won't and you're gonna compromise the hood structure of the, the latch if you do too much modification. So what I'm doing is, is I'm turning it sideways and it's a lot less dramatic that way. And I still have to do a little bit of trimming but it's gonna be minor compared to what I would have to do otherwise. All right, so it's nine o'clock at night, which means I'm pausing for the night because this thing makes a hell of a lot of noise, but the carbide tool that I got, the brass one for the Dremel, freaking works. Now, we do have a problem. I don't think the pins are in the right location now because of the amount of angle that we need to get it. We probably need to move it more inward towards the, uh, the engine, but that's not a big deal because we have plenty of meat there, and if we need to, we can even tack on a little plate. You can see now that if we have it like such, this is going to need to be more uh, to the right here to make it really kind of work. Not a big deal. Like I said, there's plenty of meat right here that's flat that we'll be able to move it in, and that's not a big deal. So we'll do that. Right now, though, we do have these working. So this one, I have to trim a bit of the inside just so I can get it at that angle. But it was either this or nothing. So... Um, when I do this, and about there, it latches. So that's good because that's the right 
almost the right angle. It gets a little bit more dramatic, but it's okay. It'll be fine. Uh, so I've notched both of these to kind of work like that, and I think we'll be okay. Uh, this one I've marked the holes to drill. I haven't gotten there to finish it, but uh, like I said, if we need to, we'll move this in a quarter of an inch, and that should give us the gap we need. So it took some time this evening. It's the next day from the last clip. It took some time to <coughs> go ahead and finish up the lashes themselves. <coughs> and I was thinking, you know, we're almost done here. We just got to do the pins, but ran into a problem. But I got a solution. Okay. So the solution is burn the car down. No, I'm kidding. I gotta go get some hardware. It'll probably be tomorrow at lunch while I'm working. We need a washer that's big enough for this to fit in, but has more uh, thickness and width. So that way we can weld it. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out this section because there's a seam. You can't see it, but there's a uh, like an under seam where it pinch welds right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of cut out a little section around it and then we're gonna weld that washer after we kind of dig enough out to get the nut because it needs to sit right there pretty much right there we'll do the same thing on the other side on the other side I gotta trim my upper rad mount uh, a little bit Not, nothing too crazy and then we'll have hood latches that work which is freaking awesome because uh, that's the only thing really keeping us from driving because we got tires now, baby. That's what's up. Now we got meats, baby. Meats. Um, yeah, they're proper meat. I'm going to go, put these on now and then we're going to close out this video. And then in the next video, you'll see me do the washer trick and get the front end buttoned up. And then we'll go for the first drive. So stay tuned. Uh, you're going to want to subscribe if you want to see this thing move on its own power somewhere other than the driveway. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and then we'll close this one out.